Okay, in this video, I just want to quickly go over this project which I have built. Now this is a Pinewood Derby Decision Maker, which is very popular with Boy Scouts and youth groups. I built a few of these different types, but this is probably the simplest and cheapest uh, way to go. So if you have a track and you need a decision maker, you might want to have a look at this one. Now this is for a four lane track. You can see there's four indicators, which indicates the winning track. And on the side I got on off switch and it's powered by 9 volts and there's a 9 volt battery inside the box. And on this side is my reset switch, which is reset the display after every race. And on the back is a terminal strip to hook up to the sensors on the track. So it's a pretty simple box, it's easy to build. So I'll power it up and I'll demonstrate how it works. Okay, I have my project box powered up and I brought out the lane 1 to lane 4 trigger wires onto my breadboard. So that's lane 1, 2, 3 and 4 and the wire on the very left is my plus 9 volts, that's my trigger voltage and I have that connected to a, to a wire. So now I could trigger each lane by touching the lane 1 to lane 4 trigger wires. So I'll start on lane 1, I'll trigger lane 1 you can see lane 1 LED comes on and if I trigger the rest of them nothing happens. So I do a reset I could trigger lane 2 now if I trigger any of them nothing happens I reset, go to lane 3, I'll trigger any of them, nothing happens, and go to lane 4. Trigger lane 4. Now after lane 4 is triggered, no other lane can be triggered. And I reset. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the Pinewood Derby Decision Maker. Now there's basically three ICs that make up this circuit. There's a 4042 which is a quad D flip-flop, so there's four flip-flops in one package. There's a ULN2804, which is a Darlington driver, which drives the LEDs. And then there's a 74HC20, which is a four input NAND gate. There's actually two of them in a package. Now when we first power up the circuit, this RC network here puts a neg negative going pulse in pin 13 of the NAND gate, and we'll get a high output of pin 8. That's fit into pin 5, that's a store pin on the 4042 quad uh, flip-flop. Now pin 6 of the 4042 is a polarity pin. That determines what kind of clock input is needed to clock the 4042. So when pin 6 is high, it's looking for a negative going edge on pin 5, that's the store pin, that will clock the 4042. Now when pin 5 is high and pin 6 is high on the 4042, the flip-flop is in transparent mode, which means all the D inputs from D1 to D4 or are connected to the Q outputs, Q1 to Q4. So whatever happens on the D inputs will happen on the Q outputs. Until the store pin goes low, from a high to low, it will latch the outputs, they'll freeze. So no matter what the D1 to D4 is doing on the inputs, the Q and Q knots will be latched until the store pin goes high again. So when we, when we, before we start the race, we hit the reset button. So all the Q outputs will be low, all the LEDs will be off, and all the Q0 outputs will be high, feeding the NAND gate, and we'll have a high on the store pin, pin 5 of, of the quad D flip-flop. Now when the race starts, and the car on lane 1 gets to the switch first, we'll get a high into D1, that'll be transferred to the Q, and that'll turn on lane 1 LED, and Q0 will go low, and pin, which will hit pin 5 on the NAND gate, and it'll cause the clock to go from a high to low on the, on the store pin, which will latch the output, and it will freeze the output no matter what other cars are doing from uh, D2 to D4. So the lane 1 light will be on, indicating that lane 1 won, and, and the rest of the cars will have no effect until the reset button is pressed for the next race. That's basically how it works, pretty simple. So next we'll actually look at the, the box, we'll take the, uh, the, the cover off the box, we'll have a look at the circuitry in, inside the box. Okay, here's my circuit board for the Pinewood Derby Decision Maker. And you can see the three ICs on the board, on the Vero board, which I mounted on standoffs inside the enclosure. Now my terminal strip is a, is a through chassis terminal strip, so I could wire everything onto the board. And I have chassis mounted LEDs for the display, the front display. And on the left is my power switch, it's a toggle switch. And there's my battery clip, and I'm actually mounted my battery on the lid of the enclosure. And on the right is my reset switch. So that's basically it, that's the circuitry. Now I have a variation on this circuit. You notice on a schematic I'm using switches 
to detect the cars that come over the finish line. Now I was using micro switches, which is a mechanical switch, but I had a little problem. Uh, if somebody built their car and they, they carved the bottom end of, their, of the front end of their car so it's higher off the ground than in another car, the car that's lower to the ground would actually trigger the micro switch first. So to, uh, to fix that problem, I went to optical sensing. So that's a variation on the circuit. It's a little bit more complex, but it's, uh, it, it works a little bit better. So that's one variation we could use. It's optical sensing to sense the cars coming over the finish line. Okay, here's my variation circuit from mechanical sensing to optical sensing. Now this is my original circuit using a micro switch. Now normally the micro switch is open, so the pull down resistor will feed a, a logical zero into the D input of the flip flop. Now when the car comes over the finish line and hits the micro switch, it will short out the micro switch and that will feed a logical one into the D input of the flip flop. Now this circuit will work if everybody made their cars the same and kept the bottom of the cars flat. But that doesn't usually happen, so we have to go into optical sensing. So here's my optical sensing circuit. It consists of an, a phototransistor, an NPN phototransistor in series with a resistor. And that's being fed into a Schmidt trigger NAND gate. Now pins 1 and 2 are connected together, so this, this is a Schmidt trigger inverter. So we embed the phototransistor into the track at the finish line and put a light bar over the track at the finish line. So normally light will be shining on the phototransistor and we'll have a logical 1 at the input of the inverter, so we'll have a logical 0 being fed into the D input of the flip-flop. Now when the car comes over the finish line and blocks the phototransistor, the output will be a logical 0 being fed into the inverter, so we'll have a logical 1 being fed into the D input of the flip-flop, which will activate the flip-flop. Now there's four Schmidt trigger NAND gates inside a 4093 package, so that's enough to sense all four tracks. Okay, here's my optical sensing circuit on my breadboard. You can see my phototransistor in series with my 3.3k ohm resistor. That's being fed into the 4093 Schmidt trigger NAND gate inverter. Now the phototransistor I'm using here has three leads. Uh, most of them have two leads, but the base has been brought out on this, on this particular phototransistor, so you could actually bias it to make it more sensitive. So whatever phototransistor you get, you might have to play around with the value of the resistor to get a, a positive switch uh, output of the 4093. So I have my digital probe. I'll hook up to pin 3. That's the output of the, of the Schmidt trigger inverter, NAND gate. And you can see right now I'm getting a low output with the light shining on the phototransistor. And when I block it, that's the car coming over the finish line. It will go high. So that's my optical switching circuit for sensing the car coming over the finish line. So that's the circuits there. Pretty simple. So hope this video gives you guys some ideas how to build your own Pinewood Derby Decision Maker.